Hi guys, how are you? My name is One Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Alright, uh, I'm going to tell you straight up. <laughs> We're in trouble. I'm telling you. The economy is fucked up. Um, if you go out and you start asking business owners, uh, honestly, not the ones that are always whining. They're, you know, they're, there's some people that always whine. I'm not, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about honestly. You go ask business owners what the hell is going on, and it's it's a bloodbath. You go ask doormen in New York what percent of this building is occupied. They're going to tell you 70% is empty. Because a lot of those high net worth individuals, they don't, they don't have just one home in the U.S., right? And I'm not, I'm not talking about the working class. I'm talking about the upper class. Those people have many homes. Got up and left, okay? If they get up and leave, and they're, you know, they spend, what's going to happen to the restaurants around them? What's going to happen to the artsy-fartsy little stores, you know, that sell unique little boots or whatever? You know, what's going to happen to them? It's going to blow up, right? The rents are astronomically high. But they're high because of the high volume, right, of people. And that real estate is owned by a company, not not some guy. You can go and be like, hey, man, you know, do you understand? You know, you can have a nice, normal conversation with. They don't give a shit. It's a company. And it says, look, this is how much money I, I require. I'll, I'll, I'll let you do this. And you have to pay me this much then. And then you have, it's not going to happen. They don't care. They're, it's like talking to a robot, right? I'll tell you, get the fuck out. I'll, I'll get somebody else, right? So then that's why you're seeing these rents come dramatically down. Uh, I guess six months into it, it was down, what, 35%? Everybody's fleeing New York, San Francisco, all the major cities, they're empty. Go to Philadelphia, go downtown here, right? Empty, empty. The airline industry is telling you 50% of business travelers, they're not going to come back, okay? They're not going to come back. So... That's that's what makes an airline an airline profitable, right? You need the business travelers. You know, the hobos in the back, they're just there, you know, to supplement gas. <laughs> that's it. They don't make their money off the hobos, right? They make it out of business class, first class, um, frequent flyers, and so forth. So you, you got this really weird kind of, I don't know how, how to explain it, but... You know, I, I think of it as a, as a guy who gets shot in the movies, right? He gets shot, oh, Godama thought me, you know. And he's all down, and, and everybody initially, he's he's still alive, you know. He just got shot, and he's holding the wound, and they're putting some bandages or whatever, cloth, and tying it up or whatever they're doing, right? Initially, he's fine. And then eventually, he bleeds out and dies. Or he gets infected, and then he dies, <laughs> right? It's the same thing in the economy, What's happening? The economy has gotten shot. Initially, everything, oh, okay, I'm still alive. You know, okay, I'm going to survive this until you bleed out. And, oh, you know, I feel my my legs are cold. I'm cold or whatever. Uh, or the infection is going to set in and then you're dead. And we're in the infection phase now. That's where we are. And that's what I've been saying we will be all along. All along, don't give me this stupid fucking charge. Oh, look, retail sales have, have rebounded. Look, everything is going back to normal, right? I said, don't look at that stuff. Because all, all that it's showing you is from the lockdown to not the lockdown. So the fact that it's going up from the lockdown doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit. It's a long-term social economic problem. And all the buy the dippers, all the, you know, perma bulls, oh, look, you know, oh, this is the fastest recovery, oh, blah, blah, blah. they're all full of shit, they're delusional, <laughs> they're in outer space, okay, they are, they're really in outer space, and, and look at this chart, net flows, okay, $5.9 billion pumped into asset classes, and they're telling you there's... Oh, there's no, there's no inflation. Really? There's no inflation? No, no. No, we can print to inflation. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> why are prices in stocks and bonds and whatever so high? Why? Why is there $509 billion in assets? 
Mm? Up 9.39%. Okay, and this is year to date. This is prior, prior to the pandemic hitting. And AUM is under man, uh, 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 assets under management. Okay, so it's not like I'm cherry picking the data from the bottom of when the economy closed. This is from the beginning of the year, January. And you're up inflows of 509 billion. It's, it's a record. It's a record. Where's this money coming from? Who's buying it? The, the poor person with $600 checks? The, the small businesses? Who's buying this? Where, who found the money to go buy this? Where did they come from? And they have literally convinced everybody, even the perma bulls, bears, sorry, even the perma bears, that there'll, there'll never be another bear market again, or it's not going to happen until the Fed does something and whatever. Uche, I think, was asking me, he goes, well, where are they going to put their money? Great question. Where are they going to put their money? They're not. They're going to reduce their leverage when the bear market comes. That's what they do. They don't sell their actual money. They just reduce leverage. Okay. That's what happens. So when you reduce your leverage, what happens to that money? It goes, it evaporates. It evaporates. That's what happens. Leverage is not physical cash. You don't take it and go put it into a bank with, you know, 250,000, you know, a hundred billion dollars into a bank account with, $250,000 FDIC insurance, <laughs> right? So what happens in a bear market is they reduce leverage. That's what happens. And and it just evaporates back into nothingness because that money came from nothing, right? So that's what happens in a bear market. But right now it's the opposite. Everybody's going out and borrowing, increasing leverage. You know, uh, the Fed is pumping in trillions of dollars loans to everybody but loans again they can only you know uh, help you in a liquidity crisis not in a solvency crisis and again if you go and you ask everyday businesses how are you doing how are you doing how are you doing 70 percent down in, in in revenue i had to let go of people i'm losing money staying open okay that's the reality uh, you're seeing unemployment uh, claims starting to rise again. We're already at very high levels and it's happening again. There is deep, deep problems in the economy. Scarring, as they call it. Okay, long-term effects. It's it's very difficult to to talk to people about it because they rely their analysis they rely their analysis on price not reality and you know when you're saying well price is the only thing that pays well true if you're involved in the market it is true price is the only thing that pays but if you're not involved in the market it's not a, price has nothing to do price is just an advertising mechanism and i've said that so many times it's just there to advertise so you break it down, you look at the big businesses, not only are they getting money from the government and loans, like the airline industry now, I think it's going to get another $15 billion, okay, in bailout money. Um, they can also issue stock. They can also issue bonds, uh, junk, junk bonds, right? Government is buying them. The mere fact that they're there buying reduces the interest rate so it allows you know companies that are in the stock market they have access to so much cash it's, it's, it's the other parts of the economy they don't have access to and again as long as it can provide that liquidity can you make your next payment next month yes your stock is a buy your stock is a buy my friend you might be insolvent the next month but <laughs> next month you can make your bill i'm happy i'm buying you and, and that's a cute little story. And everybody is, you know, playing along with that. And when everybody agrees that, that that's the way you do things, and that's the way you do things. But it doesn't mean that that's value, right? That's just price. That's it. Now go to the middle class. 
go to the middle class, the, the, the business owners, the workers of those uh, companies. You know, you, you look at the corporate profits, boom, straight up. The fuck happened? How did they suddenly start making so much money with with so so high, such high unemployment, and so many so many people unemployed? Well, it's easy. First thing companies do is fire people, reduce wages. That's the first thing they do. That so you're going to see profit shoot up. Is that sustainable? I mean, is that is that the way to prosperity? That we just keep firing people and uh, reducing their wages and firing and reducing wages and watch corporate profits go up? Does that even make sense to you? Right? Of course not. That's ridiculous. So you look at that middle class, right? Uh, with the BMWs and the pool in the back and the green grass and somebody has to come clean the pool. Somebody has to, you know, cut the grass and you got to pay insurance for that BMW and the Lexus and the other one. What's $600 going to do to these people? Nothing. Nothing. What about the poor? Well, the poor are used to living paycheck to paycheck and not having. They're, they're probably best equipped to deal with this. But they're getting that $600, so they're happy. They're happy. They're like, oh, $600, I do nothing? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Is $600 enough to support the rest of the economy? No, it's not. Not even close. Um, so then, you know, it, you get a, a, a sort of, a, a, of an agreement where that, you know, BMW guy with the pool in the back and everything, he's getting that PPP money, he's getting some loans, he, initially I'm talking about, you know, he looks okay, well, you know, it's going to be better in the summertime, and then, you know, vaccine is going to come out, we're going to go back to normal, that was the belief, right, but that's not a realistic belief, that's not the way it works, but they don't understand that, they don't get it, they think it's just like a I don't know, a blizzard that came or a hurricane that came, destroyed everything. Okay, we're going to go back to normal. No, that's not the way it works. And that's what I have been saying from the beginning of the year. Since February, I've been saying it. The socioeconomic impact from this is going to be fucking devastating. And you're not going to feel it until the end. The end, it's that it's that hockey stick, right? It's that, those, those exponential numbers. You don't, it's that last doubling that matters. It's that last doubling. It's that last part that is so devastating. Not the beginning part when you first get shot and you know you, <laughs> you put some fucking uh, scarf on top of the blood and oh I'll be fine. No, forget about that. That's not the part that matters. It's when you have the infection. You know you go in septic. It's when the you bled out too much. You start to feel cold. And that's where we are right now. Am I a doom, Debbie Downer, a doom and gloomer? I don't think so. I don't. What about from the uh, from the standpoint of looking at the at the virus, right? You had to deal with it in the beginning. Period. You had to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have huge fucking problems. It's going to be devastating, right? No, but you don't understand. No, no, you don't understand. The flu kills more people. The flu kills more people than COVID. There's more suicides than there are COVID cases and deaths. 99.9999999% of the people survive, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Do 330 million people have COVID? No. Okay. So how can you say it's 99.9999? Oh, no, but, but it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. See, the death rate is not dependent only on COVID. It's not. And it's, it's a mistake to think that. that well, it's only 1.5% death rate. Yeah. Well, that's provided you have access to good health care. Right? <laughs> That's 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 why you gotta worry. You gotta wait until 330 million people have it before you can make a determination what the death rate is, because if the hospitals are overrun, guess what? That death rate will double and triple. Then what are you gonna do? Is it still one and a half percent? Of course not. All right. So the next part is what? The next part is, is there gonna be a mutation? See, every time there's an infection, there's a possibility of a mutation. I have said that since the beginning. Here we are, mutation, 70% more infectious. That's 
catastrophic, right? So now everybody's isolating fucking uh, the UK. Yeah, but we have a vaccine. I don't care what you have. Vaccine does not prevent infection, as far as we know. The vaccine is not going to be effective until there's 70, 75% of the people infected. So you're talking about another year before that, that even comes true. And you got a lot of people running around, oh, I'm not taking the fucking vaccine. I'm not taking it. I'm going to turn into a 5G tower. Bill Gates, man, you know, he wants to control us. Right? So you got those weird people. Is there is there more than 30% of them? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, the other problem, what are the long-term effects of COVID? Does anybody know? You cannot know. It's impossible to know. Nobody knows. Right? So, again, death is dependent that you have proper health care, that the hospitals are not overrun. Death is also um, dependent on not having some kind of weird mutation that's going to make the virus more deadly. Uh, And to be honest with you, even making it, you know, 70% more infections will lead to more deaths sooner rather than later, right? So that's problematic there in itself. Um, And lastly, we don't don't know what the long-term effects from COVID are. So, I, I don't think this is going to last. $900 billion they're talking about now is way insufficient to pay for all the things that need to be paid. $600 checks are not going to do a whole hell of a lot, except for the poor. Maybe some of the middle class, some, some spending. Prices for businesses have not come down. If you want to go buy a business, the prices are still very high. Um, you want to go get a personal loan? I'm sorry, not a personal loan. You want to go get a business loan? Good luck. Go to the bank and ask them. See what they tell you. They're going to laugh in your face. You want to go get a, a line of credit on your on your business? Ha <laughs> ha. Good luck. I don't care what interest rates are. Not going to happen. It's not. They're not lending. They're not lending. Uh, you think the cities that are emptying out, um, they're going to have the same tax revenue as they did last year? To be able to pay for all this stuff? You think $900 billion is enough to, to pay for that? I don't think so. Right? So, again, $900 billion, They can sit here and tell you stimulus news that, well, you know, this is just the beginning. Yeah, well, you need about $46 trillion. <laughs> Okay, and then the, what's that going to do to the dollar? Right? And then that's going to devalue the dollar if you print that much. Okay, so you devalue the dollar, and then um, what's going to happen to commodity prices, right? They're going to start going up. What's going to happen to agriculture, which is the most important? (coughs) What's going to happen to that? It's going to start to rise. So you have 30 million unemployed. You have depressed wages. Okay, and just to give you an example, for the pilots, uh, they've taken either a 50% pay cut or they're getting 30% pay cut, okay, Um, or they're forced on top of that to take leave for one or two months, so you're you're actually making even less than that, that's just an example, so how they, what what kind of taxes are they going to pay to the city, or to the government, or to the state, right, so you see, the reality will come now, okay, the reality will come now. And you guys got to be ready for that. And you can look at all these numbers, and everybody's throwing their money into the stock markets, bond markets. And when they all always do that, that's a bubble. And uh, it's not the kind of bubble that, oh my God, you know, since 2008, everything is a bubble, everything is a bubble. No, now it's a bubble, right? Uh, and eventually, um, like Uche said, where, where are they going to put the money? Well, they're going to deleverage. And when you deleverage, that money goes away. And when that happens, um, the stock market goes down, okay? Um, it's that simple. It's really that simple. And it, it only has to happen once. It doesn't have to keep happening, <laughs> right? Just like you only have to be a millionaire once, well, you only have to be in a bear market once to figure it out how it works. So Apple can go out and say, well, you know, I'm going to sell you an Apple iPhone. I'm going to sell you, 
Zoom and I'm going to sell you this and I'm going to sell you that and I'm, we're going to do advertisement on Google and we're going to do and we're going to do and we're going to do. Well, yeah, that's all great, <laughs> provided that people have internet, okay. And if they don't have money, they're not going to have internet. Uh, and provided that they um, um, they have jobs, okay. And uh, evictions are, are a problem. Solvency is going to be a problem. Um, small businesses going out is going to be a, who's going to replace them? Who's going to replace small businesses? Who has the cash? Who has the savings to go out and start new businesses after all this is said and done? Think about that. What do you think the bank's going to give you a, a loan to go buy a business? <laughs> what do you think? It's a house? Forget about it. I'm serious. Forget about it. It's not going to happen. And now they're fighting, and the Senate and the Congress are fighting not for the for the for the central bank not to have to have limited powers. They don't have any powers now. They can give you loans, you know, that are backed by the Treasury. What are they going to do? Lower interest rates below zero? Go ahead, <laughs> enjoy. What are they going to do? Not QE? Don't QE. See what happens. See what happens to the stock market. If they don't QE, see what happens to interest rates. If they don't QE, good luck with that. The facade is over. If that happens, I know you guys, you're all convinced <laughs> that the Fed is all powerful and government can keep printing. And I know, I know, and that's what it feels like at the tops. That's exactly what it feels like. You can't. You have to capitulate. But you know what? When you look back, you're going to be like, oh, I was so stupid. Wasn't it so obvious? Well, no, it's not that obvious. It never is that obvious. It wasn't in 1999. It wasn't in 2006. It's never that obvious. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Diner. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what reality is. At least my version of reality. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. We'll see. $509 billion in uh, net flows into ETFs. Record. Historical record. Small businesses are going to start to close. They're going to start to blow up. Middle class evictions and employment and I'm not talking about 30 million evictions that's ridiculous the, the government would never let that but there will be evictions there will be companies that are going to start to blow up insolvency problems there will be small businesses that are going to blow up and that means prices have to come down I'm not talking about asset prices uh, stocks bonds whatever it's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about real assets have to come down they will they will they have to there's no way around it. Nobody's got the cash to go and replenish these small businesses and create them again. It's not the money's not there. So prices have to come down. They will. You will see. All right. Um, that's it. I'll leave you with uh, uh, a little bit of analysis. Small caps, okay, straight up, wedgy-looking thing. This will correct at some point. Right now, it's it's an, it's an open water, so it's going up like there's no tomorrow. Uh, taking a look at um, the NASDAQ, it's an open waters. Let it do what it's got to do. Let them bid up price on themselves. Let's see how long that lasts. But again, no matter how high it goes, it's going to end up being bearish. Whether it's going to be a bearish structure because it's going to look something like this, or it's going to be a, a bare structure because it's going to look like this. Either way, doesn't matter. End result is the same. It's going to happen. It's in the charts. It's in the fundamentals. It's in everything. Don't be fooled by price. It's just an advertising mechanism. Same thing with S&P 500. Okay. Dow Jones, right? Rising F flag. You can see it. Okay. Um, dollar, right, going straight down, probably come and test this area, see if it bounces, see if it holds, 
All right. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, but remember, currencies are funky in the sense that they're always relative to each other. So you never know who else is going to blow up. Right? You don't know if Europe is going to blow up. Asia is going to blow Somebody's going to blow up. Okay? So that's it. Uh, I'm little rant. little rant. I know. But it has to be said. It has to be said. You can keep me, keep me to my word. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll eat shit. I don't care. But it's not what I believe. It's not what I understand. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.